OK. So we are ready to discuss, as uh, I promised on, uh, whoa, what was that, on Monday? We are ready to discuss uh, some ideas, suggestions, and constraints, and uh, tips, and warnings uh, about the projects that, that you will uh, propose and that you will develop during the course. And the only thing we know up to now is the topic or the title of this uh, theme of the year that we call the, the Cittadella Politecnica. So we will try today to define it better, to give it a, a real definition, some constraints, some rules uh, of the type uh, of projects uh, that we'd, we'd like you to develop. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll also give you some ideas. Uh, not uh, examples of, of actual projects, but ideas of, uh, we will call them later, ingredients that you can put together to make your own recite, hmm? your own project recite, by looking around uh, what's, ha what's happening outside these windows. So, uh, okay, so this is the, the schedule for today. If, let's give a definition that will list uh, what are the, the requirements, so a criteria for which we will say, yes, this project is good, you can go ahead, or no, let's try to modify it, or it doesn't apply, or it's not uh, valid for this course. And then I would like to spend some time with you to analyze the uh, results that you gave in the survey that I ran some weeks, weeks ago. And uh, we'll train ourselves by reading the, through the survey responses and say, okay, this uh, is good or not uh, uh, according to which criteria, hmm? so that we can uh, filter them and then see what, uh, what's emerging from them and maybe new ideas will, will emerge after the analysis of the good and the bad ones. And then these uh, ideas, hints and suggestions about uh, looking what's, what I see looking around and then the next steps from the practical point of view, right? So first, uh, the definition of the team is uh, creating, identify, design and prototype <coughs> some ambient intelligent features inside the Polytechnic Auditorium Linux campus. Identify, design, and prototype. So the final goal, of course, will be to have a running prototype. We already know that. First, uh, we have to identify what we want to do. So define some features, some characteristics, some actions, some, uh, some value. Hmm? Say, OK, the Polytechnic Auditorium campus will be more intelligent uh, uh, smarter or uh, better, better place to live and to study and to move and to eat and to whatever, uh, if, hmm? if uh, we had this sort of uh, technology installed, uh, applications installed, interfaces installed, and so on. And uh, campus, let's try to think about it uh, in a large, in the large, say, in, uh, with, the, with, what, uh, with the wide eyes. Hmm? Uh, the campus is made of classrooms, it's made of offices, like my office, of corridors, hallways, uh, inside the departments or the big public ones, uh, open spaces, you see, the, here, when, when the some sunny, sunny day, the open spaces are a good value, bars, uh, canteens, uh, laboratories for students, for researchers, and so on, the residence uh, dorms, and the college, and something like that. So, Think wide. What, uh, what relates in some way to our life or our activity as uh, people who go around Politecnico di Torino? Our meaning uh, students or teacher or staff or visitors or many, the many types of dynamics that go around this, uh, this university. And uh, we, mm, we may see that the campus is a sort of a small city. Hmm? Uh, for the number of people it is, actually, indeed. Uh, but uh, in general, also from the, the layout, we can uh, imagine it and try to, up, the idea is try to apply on the small scale, well, on the small scale of the Polytechnico, but even on the smaller, smaller, smaller scale of our prototype, which will be imagined within the Polytechnico, but will be built on a table uh, or on a room or uh, on a smaller scale, not. Uh, we're not going to deploy anything at, on the scale of the campus. We imagine something that can be useful to the campus, and we will deploy a prototype on a very small, inside the room, let's say, on a very small uh, size. Hmm? But uh, the, we try to apply the same ideas that in these years have been around uh, about the topic of smart cities and, uh, and all of that uh, 
if you try to search the new the technology news about smart cities, you find really uh, a lot of uh, topics, ideas, different points of view, and so on. Hmm? And smart cities are smart for the citizens. So something not it's not smart uh, for the technology. Hmm? It's smart for the services they offer. Uh, that's our point of view. That's why we want to recall the idea of smart cities, because the city is for the citizens. Hmm? And the smart polytechnic or the smart campus is for the polytechnic living beings, hmm? students and teachers and so on. So this is the, I try to, 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 to sort of a, give a definition of the theme and, and the scope of that. Hmm? Essential features. Essential feature, so the project need to be ambient intelligence project. And the ambient intelligence as we defined uh, on Monday, they all share as a basic characteristic these four steps. Sensing and acting as a ways to interact with the environment and with the human in some way. Reasoning to apply some logic, some algorithm, some criteria, uh, some software to come up with uh, intelligent decisions or at least decisions which are not uh, pre-decided, pre-defined, uh, or, or just to dumb, or just uh, uh, programmatically defined, and interaction. Interaction means uh, involving in some way the user actions, the user knowledge, through interfaces, through uh, displays, through the modi some modifications in the environment, uh, through his actions, uh, or whatever. Okay. In the, in the project, uh, we want to see all four of these. If you have one project which is just only interaction, just the one, just one mobile application, so maybe it's, in, it's intelligent, but it's all software on a smartphone, it doesn't qualify because there's no sense in or acting in that case. Uh, if it's something just, uh, oh, let's make more efficient the heating in this room, well, uh, this is just sensing and acting and maybe reasoning, but the user interaction is missing because it's just some making be better some, say, behind the wall mechanism. And so we'll try uh, to, uh, to see all four of these items in the project. And <coughs> as a corollary, as a consequence of this requirement, mobile-only projects are not good. So one mobile application that is very advanced, uh, well, it, it is very advanced, it may be a good thing, but it doesn't qualify for ambient intelligence. Okay. It could qualify for a smart campus in general, but not here, right? Software only solutions also. We need to have, we want to learn to interact also with the devices, huh? with the hardware, with the sensors, with the actuators. Cloud only solutions, so software that runs on websites and uh, a Facebook application for, okay, that would be a nice idea, but it's not enough. Uh, mind the only, mobile only is not okay, software only, cloud only, but mobile is okay. Software is okay, cloud is okay, if combined with other ingredients, okay, they make the project. So, no, so and uh, no solution that doesn't, that, don't, that don't involve the users in any way, so if there is no point in which you can identify the user interaction, if the user is just a, a passive being, uh, but it doesn't qualify again. Um, should involve some sensing, and again, I, I define sensing in a wide sense. I sense it about the environment, sensing something about the user, uh, sensing something about, uh, in general, the environment of the user, but also through social media or through cloud services or something like that. So it would be okay, I don't know, to sense the user location from its calendar or it's a way of uh, uh, indirect sensing, it's okay. As long as it's not all clouds, it's not all web services, they can be useful. Huh? And, uh, and the same for actuation. Mm -hmm. Actuation may mean uh, switch this light on or give me a notification on some social media or some mobile device. Uh, it's one way of notifying, mm -hmm. of, uh, of actuating something mm -hmm. or giving information should not be simply deterministic. So some, some sort, some light for sort uh, or form of intelligence is in some way needed. 
something which you just you, do, you, you just don't have to make two and two is four, but all depending on two and two, maybe four or five or seven, because in some uh, conditions, hmm? maybe it's not a two, but it's a two depending on. So, so um, there, are, there should be some external factors or context factor that that influence the way the system is reacting. Otherwise, it would be just a simply a control algorithm that, hmm, that reacts. Uh, <laughs> just to point out about the cloud services and stuff like that, integrating with cloud services is okay. Can be very useful because you can have a, sell a very great amount of information available and people are using them and they, they already have the infrastructure to integrate with mobile devices, so you take a lot of uh, work down for free. Um, we will also see in the first weeks uh, how to interact with some of the services through Python uh, code, and you see that will be very easy because there are Python libraries for, you name it, for every, let's say, service that is out there. So it's quite, quite easy also to integrate. Uh, and uh, can be a form of sensors for knowing something about, you know, the weather, about the location of the person, what the person is doing, or what. Um, or actuators, so a way for giving information or for changing something about them. Mm. The only constraint that we put, so we can use them, they can play the role of sensors or actuators. The only constraint we put is that they are not, they should not be the only sensor and actuator. Okay, so the, we, we, we want to have also some real sensors or some real actuators in the, in the environment. Just keep that in mind. Mm. Okay, and the second, uh, requirement is uh, to incorporating this uh, uh, MEA flower at least uh, as much as possible or as many features as you can in your project. Uh, I don't say all of them, I say as many as you can because uh, it depends also on the type of project, what is the real nature of the project. Some projects will be more on pervasivity, for example, others will be more on sensitivity, more on adaptivity. It depends on the nature of the project. But try to at least ask yourself, well, is all of this considered? Could it apply better? Could it, could it improve the project by making it more, I don't know, ubiquitous? Or it doesn't apply to this case? Hmm? Uh, because this room is not ubiquitous, it's here, so it cannot move, can not be anywhere else, so it doesn't apply too much, okay? So it depends also on the project. I, I don't say this must apply to every uh, side of this flower, but uh, it should, you should consider whether and how much it will apply to each of these. Hmm? It's a way also of checking your idea. Hmm? Uh, it's a more detailed than, than the first uh, cycle, uh, but it can give you, it, it can give us, uh, checking with this uh, characteristic can give us more also ideas or suggestions for improving the project and make it, it, making it more a bit intelligent. And uh, <laughs> while you are running wild with your fantasy, uh, we need to put some constraints. First, uh, we can't modify the infrastructure. So where you say, let's uh, build a new classroom or, uh, uh, or, or modify walls and doors and hallways, it's not feasible. Uh, also modifying, for example, the real heating or lighting of a, of a classroom is not, well, it, it's complex because uh, actually it would not be technically too complex. The issue is that we, we just cannot uh, open that, uh, um, I don't know the name, sorry, of that uh, device, uh, and uh, just connect the wires differently. It's not difficult, but le legally uh, we can't, okay? And, uh, and so putting additional Wi-Fi hotspots or something like that is not, uh, it's not a something we can change. So we can work with what is provided at the infrastructure level. Of course, we can imagine something better, but on a small scale. So I want to make a, a new way of, I don't know, lighting a, a classroom. We cannot change the classroom lighting system, but we can make a corner in the lab where we simulate that. Okay, and we can imagine or project or design how it would apply to the whole classroom, just for example. Because we need to, uh, to have something that we can build and test, not just imagine. 
uh, additional devices are okay. So you are, if you are thinking of adding something to a classroom, to a corridor, adding a sensor, adding a device, adding the machine, or it can be done, of course. Hmm? Just don't think of leaving it there for two months because it will disappear after 20 minutes. Uh, and, uh, but uh, doing some experimentation in a classroom, for example. So we don't modify, we can modify the classroom, but we can put one or many or two cameras and a sensor and uh, I don't know, a, a, a robotic chair, I don't know, in the classroom for the testing, for the development, it's okay, it can be done as long as it's something that is just temporary, that is just adds on to the existing infrastructure and doesn't need to change or replace it or modify. Hmm? Just practical constraints, just not to, to be led too far in your, uh, in your thinking in direction that will find uh, practical obstacles in, uh, in, in completing the project there. On the other hand, <laughs> I won't die, I promise it. Um, many existing plants are already monitored. Not this one, I would say, but in many places of the electrical distribution system or the air vent system or the water distribution system and so on, we already, we as a Polytechnic, we already have sensors. And uh, uh, so if we need the, some information about the current system, we can get it. So we, we know the people who collect this information here in the Polytechnic, there is a, uh, a service, an office in Polytechnic, which is called the small and smart and green building. Uh, I don't know if you ever, when, when you enter from the main entrance in uh, Corso Duca 24, on the right there is a sort of a totem, a display with some curves showing you the electrical the, um, consumption and the generation from the solar panels or something like that. Okay, on the, on the right uh, when you enter uh, from, from the main entrance. Hmm? Uh, that display is powered by the data that is collected by this office and is consolidated into a set of databases. So we will not let you touch the sensors, touch the plants, but we can arrange for having some of the data offline or on real time. It's all need to be set up, but these people are uh, willing to, co to collaborate with us. So if you, ima if you are imagining or thinking of a, pro or a problem, project sorry, that needs to know some of this information, uh, okay, we can arrange that. Just keep in mind. Don't, don't, uh, you don't, we don't need uh, to think about uh, putting extra sensors or modifying the plan for it. There's a lot of, uh, for example, in all the distribution tree is all monitored. So there's a, a meteor station on top of the of some of some buildings, so we can have real time uh, wind, humidity, lightning, and there's all 24, 25 different parameters uh, uh, updated every five or two or ten, or ten minutes. Uh, there are sensors for water consumption, for gas consumption. Uh, uh, some classrooms are already monitored from the point of view of the air treatment system. So there's a lot. Hmm? If you just have some ideas, you are thinking about some ideas in, in this area. Just tell us and we'll tell you what's available and put you in contact with the persons, right? Um, another constraint, so first was uh, we cannot rebuild the Polytechnic or some plans of it. And the other constraint is uh, it should be easy to demonstrate, okay? The idea is that you, it's something that should be relatively easy to move work in the lab, probably you will also work at home, and uh, you will need to show it in the lab, and in September show it uh, uh, to, in the showcase to the company elsewhere. So as much as possible, think about something that can be packed up and installed. Uh, okay, maybe it will take only two, five minutes or maybe two hours, but uh, it should be some way movable. And easy to demonstrate is also, also means uh, there's something to see. Not just, uh, okay, but all the data is there. You don't see it because it's a black screen, but uh, you know the data is there. Uh, you, no, you, should, you should also have something for which this is part of the interaction, actually, for which the users can see what happens. So the system should be transparent. The user should understand what's happening. 
Um, there may be exceptions. Uh, there may be some systems that requires actually, I don't know, some integration. I don't know, something that you put in your house uh, and you install there, and it, it, may, it only makes sense if it, if it runs there. So at that point, uh, we will make exceptions during the, the exam. You will sh not show a, a real demo, uh, but we show video of the, of the system working at your home or whatever. Hmm? So it can be arranged if, the, if it makes sense for the project. So priority is for the project. Um, the, the other point is, uh, uh, Let's try to avoid permanent installations. So something that you put there and needs to be there or to stay there for two weeks or one month. If we install something in a classroom, well, the day after probably will be, will be gone. No? Somebody will see it and say, oh, it's nice. I, I want one at home. No, I want this one at home. And uh, so, um, if it's uh, temporary, you put it, you do some experimentation, some development, so take some measurements and then take it away, it's okay. But something to be left there for a period of time. And this may be uh, needed or useful if your project uh, implies some uh, historical analysis uh, or some learning or training from day, continuous data. So it's something that should go on for some amount of time. But uh, we, we cannot trust uh, putting something like that there, you know, unless you plan to stay there 24 hours uh, to, to keep an eye on it. Uh, but uh, there are some uh, safe places. So if you need to have some permanent installation inside the LADISPE, in, in the lab, it can be done. You just uh, talk with the technician, say, okay, where is the corner where I don't, don't break anything? Let's put it, it's a, it's a place where there's already you know, people that are looking after. Uh, some offices, if you want to put something that makes sense in an office, uh, our offices in the department are a good place. Uh, we, can, we are open to, to let it uh, be uh, used as a, uh, as a test lab in, in the department. So in some places there, were, there are already some locked space and some surveillance, some security, we can arrange that. Hmm? But again, uh, if, if then it can be moved, uh, or maybe there's a camera that shows what's happening um, for the demonstration purposes, it would be nice. Okay, so I think this should be the rules that will allow us to tell, okay, a project qualifies or not. Hmm? Apart from this, uh, uh, we, we don't want to put, to put any other or to push you in any other specific direction. Just really, you know, any project is good as, as long as it qualifies according to this. Uh, there's no value in extra complexity or an extra, just uh, try to do something which is consistent, which is good, which makes sense uh, and uh, satisfy the rules. Hmm? Uh, I'll give you some, some more specific hints at the end. Now, uh, let's uh, have a look at your Opinions. Of course, uh, your suggestions were collected uh, one month before the, um, the course began, so you didn't have the chance of uh, applying the ambient intelligence definition or criteria, so you had just to, do rely, to, to answer by re relying on your understanding of the question that was uh, provide uh, some sh short phrases for describing how would you make the current polytechnical campus more smart or smarter, and try to describe them by the end user point of view, and don't, don't focus on the technology. No, that was the question I asked. 55% uh, responded to the survey in general, and of these, uh, 26 provided one or more ideas uh, in this. So what I'd like to do now is quickly read these 25, 26 answers, and just have uh, not a vote, but a comment uh, about whether they would apply or not and why. Hmm? Just so that, that we learn uh, what not to propose. It should be easy now after we discuss the criteria. And it can be a way of uh, no, uh, helping us to, the, to... So there were some categories for which uh, we will say no. Infrastructure, project, 
mobile only projects or proposals, there were some proposals that affected only human behavior. Hmm? We'll see it. <laughs> they are nice, uh, they, are, they made me smile, but uh, they are not good projects. And uh, another one is uh, the internal procedures of bureaucracy or something like that. Okay, these ones would uh, actually make the project more smarter. Huh? But uh, unfortunately, it's out of scope from the technology point of view. Uh, so the responses were, uh, you will see that it's a, a recurrent theme. More places to make group studies and discuss lessons. Uh, more places, uh, if it means uh, building more uh, rooms or having, mm, it's not anything we can, uh, but it identifies a need. Huh? That's something uh, that stands out. Group studies, uh, discussing lessons. Uh, more interaction with the teachers. Many teacher treaters like working up from above, and after teaching the class, they are done. It's uh, something that would need to change people, and uh, I'm not in the position of doing that. I just try not to be one of these. Um, an application to report free study classrooms with a number of seats free. This can be. Uh, uh, there's no much actuation here. There's interaction, there's an application. Number of seats free, free it's a good question. Hmm? How to measure it? Uh, you can make a lot of money if you find uh, an economical way of doing that. But uh, it's, uh, it's definitely one, one, one point that can be, that could be valid. Of course we need to, and not just this sentence, we need to elaborate on that, but. Creating an internal messaging system, the network should run on Polytechnic Wi-Fi. I asked uh, not to talk about technology, but, uh, and there should be a single subnet for each room, blah, 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 but for doing what? To make more interactive courses in which every student could ask a question without interactivity. So this uh, is mainly, um, social slash mobile application, but there is a bit of ambient, uh, not too much, uh, by saying that the people that chat are in the same classroom. How do you know that they are in the same classroom? These are science in problem. Hmm? So there, is some, there are some ingredients, it would not be perfect, but uh, have a wider, faster internet open access, uh, also in my home, please. But, uh, um, Given establish more project-oriented lessons or labs lessons, again, I agree, but I have an interactive portal between the teacher and the students. Uh, I really didn't understand what, what it means uh, between the teacher and the student, uh, probably some sort of, uh, I don't know, we have the Facebook group, uh, but uh, I don't see, it, it would be a cloud-only project in, in, in a way. Yeah, to know in the way if there's a lesson in a specific class or not, uh, which is something that is already there. Because if you go to the portal, there is a function that calls, uh, that uh, asks for uh, free, free rooms. Uh, what are the free rooms now? In the lecture period. During the exam period, it doesn't work. So it's up there. In this way, if the class is empty, a student can use the class, okay. It would be also if the normal classes could be booked by a group of students. Booking a class is not something that is considered, but it may be an idea. It, mm, but all of this, you see, it just relies on, uh, it may rely on the knowledge of the calendar of the lectures. So in that case, it would be just a web application using that information, so it doesn't apply. Or some way of knowing if there's actually someone in the class and that would be sensing the, the occupancy. Hmm? But it doesn't, nah, I, for the way it's written, I would classify it as just a web application. Uh, automatic uh, semaphores, uh, traffic lights I get, uh, that turn green when many students, or not many, but for a while, are waiting to cross the street. Uh, this is an idea about the open space. You know, the, I, I, I think they imagine the traffic lights on the Corso Castel Fidardo where I usually we run and, uh, and, we, and hope, um, or just use the, the, the force of the mass when, you, when we cross in hundreds, uh, the, um, the cars will stop. But uh, it, it makes sense. Uh, there's only one aspect here, which is the interaction. Hmm? Uh, how does the user feel involved or, or understand that there's something going on there? 
that this, the, the traffic light is responding. There is something that can be, that can be made up. Huh? It's, uh, it's an idea which is a bit different, but it's nice to see different ideas uh, so that uh, uh <coughs> a screen that shows which places in the study rooms or classroom are available to go and study. Might be online, access by smartphone or computer. You see that it's a recurring uh, problem, this one. A kind of Google map over the Polytechnico, I've lost a couple of times. Uh, Google map is already there. The problem, and it's a big problem, is indoor localization. You know, GPS doesn't work indoor, and when it works, uh, it's not precise enough. So, good luck, uh, and uh, it would be a, a, a good solution for, for, many, for many applications, not just the campus. Hmm? So that would be interesting. A PC room accessible for to everybody for any need. Uh, mm, there are the labs, uh, or but it's an infrastructure thing. Uh, I think uh, using temporary sensor or a system could control the heating system. You can have a more comfortable environment and less consumes. Yes, uh, but uh, a there is no interaction, and b it would require modifying infrastructure, so we cannot accept it. Um, Useful to improve the timetables monitor already present. Uh, I found that system useful. Useful to improve the timetables monitor. I, I imagine there would be the big screens in the, in the hallways and the, in the main uh, building there that, that they show in class two there is this lecture and so on. Uh, yes, but how? To improve the timetables, what, how? Uh, it, it's not a proposal, this one. It's a wish, uh, a generic wish, oh, it would be nice. Uh, if it worked better, I would be happier, but better how? Hmm? It's not uh, any specific proposal here. Uh, it would be nice to coordinate all the events organized together to get involved easier in the campus events. Perhaps booking could be more useful for organizers. It's just a booking system, not just. Uh, okay, don't mean just as, uh, as in a negative way. No? but it doesn't uh, fit for our course. The nearest free classroom, again about the free classroom, but then there's the concept of distance, of locality. For telling which is the nearest, it, does, it needs to know where I am, at least approximately. Hmm? And solid Wi-Fi connections, without redoing the login every 10 minutes. Uh, do you use EduRom, anyone, instead of Polito? Uh, if you are using Polito instead of EduRom, you are wrong. Okay, for connecting to the Wi-Fi, okay, you can use EduRom, but every time it goes down, you need to reconnect. Use EduRom. With your credential, you go any place around Europe with the same credential. You just enter a password once. It takes some time and some fiddling with Windows, but once done, you just open your computer and connect. And if the connection drops, it will reconnect automatically. So the solution is already there. Hmm? This in this case, the smart issue would be explaining it better. Hmm? If you need help, we can, we can make a special session on EduROM. A free iOS Android application, timetable and functionality of the student profile site without going on the actual site that everybody hates, I know, like seeing and downloading the material that the teachers upload for the courses and so on. Useful, not valid for the course, it's already there. Uh, this application, I'm making a bit of advertising because it was made by one group of students that made this course the last year. So they are very good students and they made this application, they called it PolyApp, you can find it uh, on Google Play. And it does nearly everything. You need to enter the password, they will send your password, uh, sorry, they will sell your password. Uh, but uh, no, I don't know, there's no, uh, it's, uh, and, but it actually replicates most of the functionality of the portale on, on a mobile application. So if you want to give it a try, do it. And uh, so it does most of this. Hmm? And uh, they, uh, there, there's also some, some, some attempt at making it an official application instead of, right now it's not official. But uh, I help these people get in contact with the people in the, in the IT area, trying to, to incorporate that as the official application for the Polytechnico. Mm -hmm. mainly, mainly because then the Polytechnico would, be, would make a security audit uh, of what the application does with your personal data. Mm -hmm. Because you know that uh, the Polytechnico password and your scores, uh, the exams, are sensitive data, according to the European laws. 
but anyway, if you want it, it's there. Um, smart roll is shuttle connected to light sensor and light actuators in order to allow smart measurement of the power consumption and at the same time to guarantee the better brain possible. Uh, there are some rooms in which there are shutters, but uh, especially in the, um, you don't know if you ever had some uh, classes in the Mirafiori campus. In that case, there are some motorized shutters, uh, but then it would need uh, integrating with the, with, the, with the equipment, so it would not be so easy. Smart fan connected with some sensor that allow control the quality of the air to recycle the heat in the area. Cannot be done in a room, but in a corner, we can imagine doing that. Uh, it's the user that's something, the interaction, uh, the, the benefit for the user is not something that is not, it's something that is not very evident from this uh, sentence. Smart carbon phone creates a software to manage the canteen wallet through web and give the possibility to use the phone and NFC system to pay. The target is to reduce the queue at the automatic uh, cashers, not cages. I, I hope that there are no cages in the, um, in the canteen. Um, It's only a necessary payment, uh, see, not only because it's very complex, uh, but uh, we don't see any ambient interaction there. Uh, we, are, we are trying to buy some NFC sensors, uh, if, uh, let's, hope we, let's hope we get them in time for the lab, hmm? so doing something like that, but not just going there and paying. That is a functionality that will be integrated, that re right now it's already integrated in our smartphone, so. It's the server side, it's the canteen that should uh, keep itself with that. So it's, uh, uh, we, it's, not, it's not anything that we can do in our project. Uh, I did a possibility to follow re a video recorded lesson in real time. Huh. Uh, I don't know whether it can be done. What I know is that this equipment here that is recording the lectures is actually a video conference system. Whenever we open, a, we record here a, a lecture, we actually open a video conference with no one on the other side. And, uh, but the video conference is uh, recorded and then it's downloaded and translated and encoded and so on and it, it ends up in the, in, in the portal. I don't know if there are any facilities for letting anybody connect to the video conference system live. Uh, technically, I don't think it's impossible. But again, it's not something that has to do with the environment. It's just a network issue and just an application. But it's an idea that we could, we could, uh, we could talk to Salvatore. Okay, um, a couple of other pages, but uh, you see that a lot of things are repeated. A makerspace in it. Well, not a real maker space, but you know that we have a couple of uh, uh, 3D printers in the lab uh, laboratory, right? So, not for anything more complex, so you, so you don't have any uh, wood cutting system or whatever. But uh, again, it's an infrastructure system. Every lecture provided by the professor may be recorded automatically in class and uploaded. Well, it's happening here, and in other classes, uh, the problem is automatically. So if uh, the, there's no recording equipment, uh, well, I'm doing that for my course, for my, for my PC, but it's uh, not automatic. I need to push the button. So, um, but uh, if we are talking about a, a system that has a camera in a room and that I will automatically start the camera without any human assistance, that would be idea, an idea. So I don't know what was in the mind of this sentence, but something that could be. Um, uh, and user could be given access to an API, provide the number of Wi-Fi devices connected at a given moment in any area of the campus. But it's not a project by itself, but it could be a sensor that estimates the number of persons. I don't know how easy it is to get this information, but it's uh, one, one sensor value that we can imagine using. Developers could then develop apps to provide information about classroom library congestion, which is linked, of course, to the previous sentence. Um, another requirement, more electricity uh, outlets in the, in the classes. Yes, but uh, it's an infrastructure issue. More satellite station. I don't know what are the satellite station is uh, for the secretary issue, maybe. Um, provide data information so that class 
class schedule where you can find a, a free class and so on. This is uh, just software in the web application of the portal. So no, I would introduce a better lighting system. Insert le let LED lighting with sensors that can shut down the light when there's nobody nearby. Hmm. It's a bit simpler, too simple. So it's something that you can do just with a presence with a movement sensor and, uh, and a lamp. It's something that you can buy at the supermarket for uh, 15 euros. Hmm? So uh, an official app of the Portale Adiatica, we already have that. Uh, uh, fixing the stuff of the international office, I won't comment this uh, because probably this person has some issue with the bureaucracy of the international office. Um, I can't do anything about that. A mobile application that shows there are places to sit available in the study rooms. And again, counting the persons or the free spaces in a, in a, in a space. A system manager of reservation laboratories. This would be just software. A system to report study rooms free and the number of free seats. Again, the same idea. Automatic doors of each classroom as the, as the door of office of professors and students opening the door by student card. Automatic doors of each classroom, I don't know. They are open, I don't know. Uh, maybe when, when maybe they are referring to some period of the year where the classroom are locked. So if you have an ID card, you could enter maybe. And I don't, I don't know. Uh, using your badge for entering the, the office of professors, uh, I would vote against, please. Um, it's not complex, I just don't want. At uh, every seat of a classroom could be, uh, be an electronic supply. Okay, in, this, in some classrooms there is newer ones. Uh, um, should Wi-Fi should be acceptable for many parts of the Politecnico, but okay, but in which you can talk each other, students can talk each other like a forum about projects you would like to realize and also maybe create a work team about it. Um, it's again all software, all web, and it won't work because uh, creating forums of students uh, never worked well. We tried it many times. Try to use better the monitor, create a more interactive environment. Again, about the monitors in the hallways, but we need to come up with a specific idea. The canteen account, uh, the machine uh, broke down and money is eaten by the machine, and recharging with failure, and we need to find someone to get the money back and so on. We can improve our line system to solve this problem by setting up a canteen account which is not able to go back. Uh, and, and this goes on with the, with the ideas. So, uh, again, something about uh, the canteen payment, but not in the cashier in this, play, can, in this time, but in the, in the machine. Mm, I don't know whether, whether we can make something out of it. So, a lot of ideas were filtered out. I think the surviving ones, with a lot of question marks, of course, because there are just initial points of ideas that need to be worked out, not to, to be transformed into a project proposal. Uh, a lot of people talk about uh, free places to study, free rooms, uh, free rooms or free places inside the rooms, so a classroom which is not occupied by a lecturer or, or a study room which is not fully occupied by students, uh, which ones are free, which the closed ones near are free, uh, to go there, to book it uh, before going there and finding out that somebody else was already, has already took the last two places and so on. So uh, I get that this is a problem that you feel on yourself, that a lot, a lot of people propose ideas on that. Hmm? So that can, be, um, that can be a basis for some project. Let's not do all of this. Hmm? Uh, chatting with other students in the same classroom is also something that can be communication, maybe extending it because like, like this, it's just uh, too simple. We already have WhatsApp, so create a group, room 3i, and we are done. Um, how many students in classes? How? Counting people entering and going out uh, with a camera, well, if you can do it. Uh, counting people here with maybe with infrared or with visible. So there. Uh, I, I will issue a warning at the end about this type of project. Uh, let's not transform ambient intelligent projects into computer vision projects where 90% of the work will be finding an algorithm of computer vision that uh, understands some, something happening. Uh, because otherwise, we, we cannot give any, any support to you and you will spend a lot of time on different topics. 
the traffic lights, the idea that didn't come to me, and uh, the canteen, uh, there's something that we want to do in the canteen, it's, uh, it's a place that, that people don't like, uh, but, but maybe not just in payments, also trying to imagine some other scenarios. And many others, if, if we take the original idea and we try to reason about that with the ambient intelligent flower, um, then maybe they can be transformed. Hmm? So I think uh, it's a brainstorming day today, so there's no yes or no. It's, uh, let's try to, uh, I'm trying to make you, each of you have a different idea in mind and then pursue it in your group. And to widen our view or, or, or our ideas, what I did is to look outside of the window and say, okay, are there any companies inside the campus which are already working on projects uh, related uh, to smart cities? And they are, of course, smart cities and smart building, G, this is a G at the end. If you see a D, you are wrong. Um, and <laughs> so I contacted three of these companies that I knew that they had some significant work behind and uh, asked, the <coughs> asked them to provide some information about the um, project they did, the project that they are doing, uh, uh, some results, some prototypes, something like that. Hmm? Uh, these companies replied uh, very willingly, so they said, yes, it was a good idea, thanks for asking, and uh, they are also uh, available for mentoring or for helping with the project. So if someone wants to have a project related to some of the issues that they will show, uh, the, the people who propose the ideas are available to go there and talk uh, one or two times uh, to understand the issues, and in some cases also to lend you some equipment, to let you use their devices that they have. Hmm? So just to, to wait and to, make, to, to, to increase the number of possibilities. So in detail, I asked to three companies. Uh, there are three, say, quite large companies, uh, because there are a lot of uh, small startups that just focus on one single product, uh, and in, my view, in many cases they are too narrow or too technology focused. So I went for the three largest ones. One is uh, Istituto Superiore Mario Boella, there, uh, on the ground floor there, all this, that line, the, 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 that yellow building uh, is uh, Istituto Boella. Um, then there is Telecom Italia, which just opened last year some labs uh, inside Politecnico. Uh, you know where the room number 12 uh, is, Aula 12. Uh, on the third floor, half of the floor is taken by people from uh, uh, Telecom Italia, and they created what they call joint open labs. They are joint from be between Telecom Italia and uh, Politecnico. There are four of them, uh, one uh, about swarm uh, intelligence, uh, one about robotics, one about uh, uh, mobile application and interaction, and another one that I don't remember. Uh, sorry, but uh, you, can, you can find them the, on the website. And the other one is uh, CSP, which is a, there's a, it's a bigger company, but there's a branch of this company here, uh, just in the second floor in the business research center where we have, uh, we have the incubator, the ETHROP incubator. On the back, there are, there are some other companies. It's called the BRC, Business Research Center on the second floor is totally occupied by CSP. Okay, so I knew that these companies, uh, I'm saying also something about this company because you may be interested for your stages or thesis or whatever, hmm? because they are very open to collaborate with students uh, because it's, it's one of the reasons they, they opened uh, uh, here inside the campus. Okay, big warning, big. Uh, these following ideas are not examples of projects suitable for the course. Okay, it's not something that would fit as it is as a project. Some are too large, some are too small, some are focused on other issues, not ambient intelligence, okay? So just take them as ingredients to nurture uh, your imagination uh, and make you combine different ideas. Hmm? And also you may use this idea to gain some contact with enterprises, maybe to go and discuss and get new ideas again. Okay. 
they said not, right? Not example of project. So don't propose something like this because they are not. I just took what they are doing and what they did in the recent past. So some examples. Uh, Isidro Boella is making a, a attentive waste bin. So it's something that is a good looking waste bin. Oh, this is a video, I didn't know it. I didn't notice, okay, it's not available. Uh, quick time in my system. Um, it's something that uh, uh, it measures uh, the field level, it's connected to Wi-Fi, and uh, there's a little LED strip uh, that uh, writes something when you approach it, so it senses to the, the approaching, and uh, uh, so interact with the user and interact with the system to detect uh, how, how full or, or how happy they are. Hmm? And it can also, can also speak, they say. Hmm? So it's a, it's, it's a part of the campus, of course. The green aspect of the campus is also waste collection. There is a mirror for, uh, mirror user interface for safety alerts in theaters. So it would a mirror that is uh, semi-transparent, so usually it works as a mirror, but if you want, you can uh, project from the back a message that people will see through the mirror. Hmm? And uh, changes light for feedback, uh, and that's a lamp that will control the so it's another um, idea, another ingredient. This, the, the use case was developed for theaters. Uh, if you can find some uses of this, or some other things that are related to this, so ways of get, giving information to the user through of objects that usually do something else and they morph into um, fly drone tracking. These are technology that they, that they have also in always here in Instituto Boella, that based uh, on a set of, uh, um, of sensors, uh, they can detect the position, the indoor position of a drone when it's moving inside the building. So they do some sort of triangulation about the power received by the different antennas and say, okay, this is going to be in this area with this precision. Um, about uh, some ideas from Telecom Italia. Uh, these are more, these are more network-like uh, uh, ideas uh, because the Telecom Italia is doing networks. Uh, in this case, what they uh, what they are doing here is they try to uh, they call uh, build an opportunistic network. It means that they have a device, maybe the trash bin, which is in a place uh, without a connection. It's too uh, costly to wire a connection up to that point. So the, the device has some information to deliver, and it will just uh, try to exploit uh, maybe the connection of a smartphone of a person that is walking nearby. And maybe pushing some information to one device and then from this device to another one until they get the but just having a very short-lived connection with devices that just happen to be in the right spot and happen to have the right connection. And of course, they, are, they, are, they authorize you to do that, of course. Hmm? So there's a, one way of getting some sort of internet uh, where there's no um, a continuous connection. Um, another, this is another uh, mobile application that exploits uh, the sensors so that we have inside the smartphone. So there's a sensing component in this, and your, your smartphone will record the, the noise while you're walking in the city, and the, or while you're driving, and also the vibrations. So it can tell you which places of the city are more noisy, and which streets have more holes or, uh, or, well, or, or less well maintained in the city. Hmm? And uh, the idea is, ju is to reinforce the information, to validate this information when you have a, a higher number of, uh, of devices that report the same information. Because just only one, if you are making one noise now, it doesn't mean that the whole environment is noisy. Hmm? It takes uh, several devices uh, reporting the same type of information over, the, over a, 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 a restricted amount of time. Hmm? What, what they're doing here is they're trying to use a model like a pheromones of uh, ants, you know that ants leave pheromones as they go, 
and they leave a, they leave a trail of, of information about where, where they were. And another project is that to combine um, uh, readings from different types of sensors to make uh, uh, one indication of comfort. Uh, this is something more on the energetic point of view, saying uh, of the say, modeling, uh, 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 developing a model that tells you whether you are comfortable or not, or if the environment is okay. So by itself is not a complete project, but it could be one way of uh, processing the input hmm, by taking the what they are doing in this project. You notice that it's uh, it's an idea proposed by uh, Telecom Italia, but uh, also CSP, which is the third company, is involved. So you will find it again later. Uh, another idea is uh, detecting uh, how many the people density. So in a place, uh, like a public place, you know where there is the, the, the higher concentration of people and to do what they call crowd steering. So you, they will tell you, okay, if you go there, it will be too crowded, but if you take a different route, uh, it will be better. Hmm? Um, how this detection is done is not uh, very clear. I don't know whether they're doing that with, uh, probably they're doing that with mobile cells. Okay, so the telecom has, has the information about the, the, GS, uh, the 3G cells antenna, so they know how many people are in a given area. This is another picture that they stole uh, from their website. Um, this strange looking thing is a, it's a robot uh, with a camera on top and some uh, engines and computer on the, on the bottom and batteries, of course. Uh, and the, it's designed uh, to give you a guided tour of a museum. So your guide uh, is a robot, is not a person. And uh, it has, of course, uh, good and bad points about that. But the idea is that also some robotics uh, could help. So one of the, uh, on the labs in, uh, in telecom uh, deal with robotics. Uh, so if you are interested or if you have idea, ideas in this area, uh, we, we, we can put you in contact and discuss with them. There are also other groups uh, in, the, in our department that are working with robotics. You know that the, the robots is put, that every now and then you see uh, them in the hallways uh, um, of the Polytechnic where they are doing uh, some, ro some moving, moving robots. Uh, of course, you need to f we need to find an, an <laughs> a good application for the campus uh, part of this, but uh, it's one of the possibilities. Okay, about the ideas that came from CSP. Uh, one project that they have is uh, traffic monitoring based on video processing. So they put cameras. There is also one here in Castel, on Costa Castel Fidardo that look at traffic and uh, uh, compute where cars are going, how many are going straight, how many are turning right, what is the average number of cars. So they identify a car and they follow it uh, along the street uh, to give some uh, traffic statistics, actually. Mm -hmm. So, but it is a basic image processing technology that may be could be made available. This uh, picture is shows this uh, object here. Uh, it's not easy to understand what it is. It's a lamp. There was also a later uh, version with the design uh, uh, shape, so it was nicer looking. This was one of the first prototypes. In fact, it's all paper, actually. But inside this lamp, there are air quality sensors. So you can put this lamp in your living house uh, and it will measure how good is the air you are breathing in your house about pollutants, uh, CO2, and all that there are other stuff. Uh, so it's uh, an idea of hiding uh, inside every day, every day's objects, some, in this case, it's just sensing. The CSP is more specialized in on sensing, you will see, um, sensing some information that could be later on computed. Uh, about all, also air parameters, this is another picture I took from their website. Uh, they also have, this was a, a mobile device uh, and this was a, a permanent installation into a set of rooms and offices. They were doing some long-term monitoring inside their offices and uh, with different types of technologies. Um, this is another way of, uh, I called it uh, nomadic air measurements. So what you see here is a backpack. And inside the backpack, were, there was a battery and, the and an air quality sensor. It was built, uh, I think, uh, using Arduino. 
and they gave some of these backpacks to people and say, okay, let's do your life, do, do your life, walk around uh, where you usually go, and they collected the, uh, the air quality, or uh, so the air quality was high or bad, uh, so it was good or bad, depending on the value they measure, in different parts of the city. Uh, so the, at the end uh, of the trial, they had a, a map of the city where the actual measure of the quality levels were. And so it's a way of having the, mo the, the sensor going with you. Hmm? It's not a sensor that you have in your smartphone. It's something else uh, that you need to have. And it will, co it will co connect it with a through Bluetooth with a phone and transmit the data. This is another thing that could apply. They had a system for counting the people crossing a door by combining a Kinect and a video camera. So combining the visible light and the, uh, well, I don't know what kind of sensor the Kinect has inside, they were able to count the people inside a room by counting how many were, were in or out. I don't know the procedure of the system, but this is one of the projects that they, they, um, they presented. So actually, all these proposals for CSP fall into the comfort and the big keyword, the environmental comfort based on uh, mainly on uh, sensing the environment and combining measures from different sensors. They also, they call it this relational level, where also feedback from people, from social signals and uh, for explicit feedback, okay, I'm, I'm hot here, really. Uh, I, I don't care what the system says, but I'm hot or I'm cold, okay? And uh, so it's a sort of indirect measurements about different feedback signals that tell us, uh, that will tell us some information about the comfort, and they have some algorithms that developed uh, for different sub-problems. Sub so this was just, I know it's not complete, it's not uh, fully comprehensive, but some ideas that are a bit outside of what we maybe usually think about the trash being, for example, it didn't come to my mind that it could be made intelligent. So there's a lot of objects or, or activities or tasks that we do that could be make, made more intelligent. Hmm? So how to proceed from now, practically? So first, of course, your brain is already working. Don't stop it for trying to come up with good ideas. If you need to discuss these ideas with us, you can do that before the classes, after the classes, during the breaks, via email. Uh, don't, don't call me at home. Uh, and uh, on the Facebook uh, and so on. Hmm? So we can, we can help you to refine the ideas. At the same time, uh, you will have to create the groups. Hmm? Uh, and finding groups uh, with, with the criteria that I said uh, Monday, three or four people, and uh, uh, let's say a good part of the majority of the people would be, should be, let's say, good at programming because otherwise it would be difficult to get everything running. Hmm? But uh, also people who have a different background from electronics or informatics uh, are value, should be a value. Because a lot of what we saw here is about applications. It's about the, the environment, the building, the users. So, so people which is used from to see it at the different point of view, at the physical point of view, uh, will help uh, providing a good input to the project. Practically, what we are asking you is uh, to upload some information by the 19th of March. We will prepare, and Monday will tell you all the uh, address and all the details. Uh, um, on Google Docs, uh, you will have to uh, submit the composition of the group and the idea of the group, preliminary idea, which uh, would be a title and maybe a short description because maybe the title is very catchy, but it doesn't tell uh, what actually you are, you are wanting to do. And during the, and while, while you prepare this, uh, already try to think uh, sorry, about the, the requirements. So the MEI steps, uh, do all four steps uh, are considered? And uh, all the ME features, do many of the flower sites of the MEI are considered? We don't ask now for you to this to show and demonstrate that they are considered, but just think that we will have to evaluate it. So during the class of 19, we will uh, give you feedback. 
So we will pop up the list of projects and say, okay, this, this is good. This is to be deleted, deleted or to be rethought completely. This one is lacking on these issues, so please try to improve it or to consider. These two are identical, try to make them more dif uh, somewhat different, uh, and so on. We'll try to give you suggestions, hints. Uh, we'll try to be very practical just to, to indent the interest of everybody to close this process. And uh, we will ask you then by the, by the next day uh, to make these corrections from, from the feedback uh, that we gave you in classroom and uh, so that we can close it. Uh, of course, it's the first, it's title and, and description. Then in the next stages, the deliverables and so on, it can be refined. But we, what we want to close is the composition of the group and the title of the project. So that we can then create all the repositories online on GitHub and whatever, and you can start working actually. Before that day, the composition is mixed, so, yeah? Uh, so the question was uh, whether a, a, each group has to submit just one idea or more than one idea. Yeah, uh, you can also submit more than one. At the end, uh, we will have to fix one, okay? But uh, if, if, yes, if, if on the sheet you can say, okay, this group proposes the idea, if it's not good or if it's, or if it's already taken, we also have this. Yes, yes, why not? It's just a, it's a discussion phase. Hmm? So it's just a tool for discussion, this one. You can sell your ideas if they are good to other groups also. Hmm? There's a market. Um, I made one example that doesn't apply, so uh, doesn't, uh, sorry, it would be a nice, uh, from my point of view, MEI project, but it doesn't apply to the campus issue, so just not to, but just to understand the type of, le of the level of detail that we are going to ask. It's very short. So a group uh, with three or four persons, the group that will be the name of the students, we will ask you also to create uh, users on GitHub and tell us the login so that we can add into the group. But it's the detail that will come next, next week. We don't need them now. I, I gave the most hated MEI feature, which is uh, the wake up call in the morning, and make it uh, effective. So not, it doesn't just ring, but it really wakes you up. Eh? And uh, the acronym is Wake Kill, or uh, the, the, the project acronym will be used uh, in the web in, for creating the project uh, and the website uh, in GitHub. So it should be short, catchy, and, uh, and nice to remember, and so on. Hmm? And short, hmm? only one word. And the description, I try to describe this idea. Is I want to exploit different means. Uh, to wake me up, uh, ringing and switching on the lights, uh, turning on the radio, all at the same time, one of them, uh, well, we should automatically adjust time according to my agenda, so uh, when uh, I have uh, maybe classes at 8.30 in the morning, uh, it should not be wake me up at the usual hour, but before, uh, if there are, I don't know, snow coming, uh, it should be uh, sooner because I need to, to pull the snow out, uh, and, and so on. Uh, when I'm not at home, maybe in, I'm traveling, I'm in a hotel, I don't want my wake-up system to wake up my family, <laughs> because so it should only ring the phone and not uh, all the lights and, uh, and the dogs and the other stuff in-house. And uh, by the way, also the tech when I actually wake up, so until I wake up, it's still continue or pressing me, uh, but I, when I do wake up, stop, please. I, I don't know, want to go here and there and there to stop all the noise, the, or if I'm already up, maybe I woke up earlier than the, than the wake up time, so you don't need to ring, because I'm already showering, for example, so it's nothing better, nothing worse than having uh, an alarm ringing and uh, waking up every, every other person in the house when you're already up. So it just, you see, it's not much longer than the description you gave me in the, in the survey. I try to see that from here, I see that there are sensing, Sensing if I'm at home, so maybe something related to indoor sensors, or something, something related to my agenda, related to what I'm doing, whether I'm moving or not, standing. I, I'm not saying uh, detecting when I actually wake up, uh, what does it mean? What kind of sensor do we have? Huh? 
it will come later. There's nothing about technologies here. I'm not saying I have a sensor like this and that, or this network, or this user actions. What I, as a user, will see, or how we will change my behavior, what services it will do to me. Technology will come later. I don't know whether waking up means uh, pushing a button or uh, uh, taking your phone in your hand and the feels that is being moved, uh, or you have a, a bracelet like uh, you know, all the fitness uh, wrist watch or wrist uh, uh, devices uh, that just are able to detect. Uh, or I don't know. We, it will come later. Okay, we are just at the beginning of the project. We want to develop this idea. Later on, we will select the technologies for doing that. We should have a wide idea, of course, that the thing is feasible. We have something that is not uh, detecting what I'm thinking. Hmm? That would be more difficult. So it should be feasible, but you know, here in the description, we don't need, we don't want to see any technology choice. Uh, technology will, will be chosen later depending on the analysis we do on the project. This is an issue that will come out when we are, when we are going to analyze the requirement, software requirement process. Hmm? Uh, so I see that there are sensors. I see that there are actuators. Well, ringing is easy, commanding the lights, uh, the radio, or whatever. These are just examples. We are, we are not committing to that, okay? But just give me an idea that I need the environment to be able to give me information. <laughs> the intelligence should be able to detect how to wake me up and when and when not. So there should be some intelligence. It should be clever, it not, should not be stupid. Um, and uh, uh, the other part is the interaction, of course, I will feel it. I will need to express my preferences, I will need to express my times, and so on, I, I will, and I will get the feedback directly in the, in, the, in the worst of the way, so during the morning. So from this short description, I can already see that the four steps of the MI cycle are represented. They need to work, be worked out with details, of course, but the idea is there. There's nothing big missing. And then we can work on the transparency, on the, on the pervasiveness, and so on, all, all the other issues. Uh, we can ask ourselves and give us a, mm, yes, maybe, or something can be improved and so on. But the improvement is for the next steps. Right now, we are aiming at a go-no-go, no go, let's say, evaluation. If it's go, then there's something that can be improved, something to be taken into account in the design process, developing scenarios for users and so on, we, we, will, we will do that. Uh, for the moment, this, this amount of information would be enough to understand whether the project is go or not go. Uh, from the effect, it's feasibility. We don't need to, I don't need to change my house. I just need to add some devices, maybe one light on the, uh, near, near the best side. So adding one device uh, would would be easy to do, it would be easy to move uh, and to develop. So all the characteristics uh, for showing and developing the project uh, that I mentioned before are satisfied. Hmm? So uh, very few lines, uh, it would be easy to, for, for, for you first and then for us to understand whether the project uh, is okay. Just don't waste words or time or lines uh, to describe technologies, okay? This is the only error you can make at this point, describing technologies, okay? Final tips, final, are you in? Be creative, surprise me. Hmm? Uh, try to think about something strange, nice, different, not easy. It's not something you can put in your agenda. Tomorrow we'll create, not, um, but uh, you are young and open, open and more open-minded than us. Hmm? Exploit your skills or passions. So I'm not, I'm not giving many constraints on what the system does, only how it does and it can be evaluated and so on. So if you have you are passion for music, go for it. Your passion for, for animals, well, not the polytechnic will be difficult, but uh, Go for it, and, uh, and, and so on. There is somebody here with background, with a, with a different background from different countries, 
well, exploit these uh, different points of view. Hmm? Concentrate on two, three key features. If you list 25 features, they are not key features. It's a long list of features to make marketing happy. Two or three, or one, but very strong, very good. This is a system for doing this and that. Well, it's needed, it solves the problem well, people will be happy, and, it, and I will show it working. Concentrating makes your project smaller, so less work to do, which is a value in general. Uh, if, you, if you satisfy the needs, uh, we don't need to have uh, one million lines of code to be written. It's the process, it's the thinking, it's the result, it's the architecture, it's the, design, it's the design choices you make which are important, more than the number of lines of code or, or the number of additional features that, yes, they're nice so I can add it. Is it important? Is it so important that the people would choose to have your system instead of not having it? So it's a key feature. If it's something that, okay, once I have it, it's nice to also have another, yeah, why do it? Just if you want, but don't put that at the beginning, up front. Okay, ask yourself, what are the two, three reasons why the users would love, not want, love to have your, our systems instead of not having it or, buy the, or having something else? What will your users like? So it's nice for you because you are having fun building it, or you can find a motivation for the users to have some benefit, advantage. Raise the happiness level of your friends or colleagues. Hmm? That's uh, one, one filter that we need to apply to our ideas. And then, final tip is avoid too much work. So if the project, the project will be difficult anyway. You will have to develop a process to make choices, to document these choices, to implement and test and nothing will work, to find 27 different interfaces to different systems, be proficient in different languages, and making a presentation video, a website, uh, and learning to use a GitHub and so on. There's a lot of it to do, okay? Uh, let's keep the project focused. If 90% of the project, as I said before, is about uh, finding a computer vision algorithm, it will drain you a lot of time and outside the main focus of the, of, the, of the project. If you want to integrate with a system, I don't know, you know that the, the elevator in that building uh, has a system for controlling them, but you need to go through 20,000 pages of documentation to know how to interface and then, well, it can be done, but there will be a lot of time spent in trying to integrate with something which really is hard to do. It would be better maybe to try to integrate, as I saw before, with something that, well, to some subsystem where this problem has already been solved. In the smart and building environment, uh, green, green management, uh, whatever it was called, uh, about the data from Polytechnic. Oh, during the years, people are, have already solved the problem of interfacing with the real sensors. Now we have the data in the data in databases. So let's start from those. So start from places where the integration problem has already been solved. We will see in the lab all the devices how it can be easily accessible. But also, if you are thinking something else, just don't plan to spend much of your project time into uh, trying to talk with that damned device hmm? uh, or supporting new devices and so on. Hmm? So just uh, there will be. Very fancy ideas, uh, but if your um, first question would be, well, how do I, uh, you know, voice recognition, image processing, and so all the sort of hard algorithms will be showstoppers, uh, unless you already find a, a good library that does the, the stuff for you and you don't invest your time there. Hmm? You know, just, uh, I just trying to, to, to capitalize about uh, the errors that some of the groups last year made uh, and they did a lot of work. And uh, one, one, other, one additional thing uh, we will be telling you later when we see the design process, uh, but uh, maybe it's, uh, it's good to, to mention it already now, is uh, um, you can, if you need, you can even create some devices. 
at the electronics level. Uh, but again, it wouldn't, don't plan it to be 80% of the project building a new device. Well, maybe there's already something similar that you can just uh, interface and solve it with software or with a more clever architecture. Hmm? And of course, these two diagrams, I will always uh, be, be, be with us until the end of the course. Okay, I think it's, uh, it's all for today. So I will call it now. If anybody has some ideas or something to discuss, I will be here until uh, there's uh, someone who needs it. Thank you.